Hey everybody, it's Steve from BH Photo, and I'm here with Colin Gwen from 3D Robotics, and we're going to talk about the new Solo. Absolutely, yeah, super excited. So this is, it's got some heft to it, but there it is flying. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, it's not, it, it's not bad. We've got a really tuned propulsion system. Uh, we did a lot of aeronautical engineering on the propeller design, which is why it's a little quieter, which is why it's very efficient. As you can feel, it's a heavier system, which means it can fight a lot of wind. It flies 55 miles an hour. Wow. So it is a very powerful little machine, uh, but yet it's small and pretty quiet. And, now know. this is this is basically out of the box, ready to go. It is out of the box, ready to go. So you literally take your GoPro, stick it in, plug in the HDMI cable, you get full live HD video on your on your iOS or Android oh, really device. Nice. Yep, or right out of the HDMI port. So you can go to a Jumbotron or a live news broadcast, goggles, Marshall monitor, whatever you want. That's very cool. And, you know, you've got so, me speechless here on well, this. One of the cool things about Solo, so there's a couple key differentiators. When you want to know, like, what's different about Solo from other copters. I would like to know. Is that we, we designed this as a greenfield exercise. Now, having years of experience selling these little copters and teaching people how to fly and flying them myself and going out and, like, getting footage, if you're spending $1,000 plus on a copter, you're doing it because you want to get video or you want right. to get photos. So this one was designed all about getting videos and getting photos in mind. So the so, gimbal, tell me about the gimbal. Okay, so step one to getting good video is get a stable image. We solved that three years ago, right? right. Brushless gimbals. So we've been getting stable footage. Now the next part of getting good shots is the control. Is actually getting dynamic shots, right? Okay. Not just a single shot pushing in or going across, right? Now in order to do that, you need a larger system with a bigger gimbal, maybe carrying a GH4, you've got a pilot, you've got a camera operator, you've had years of training. And this has two computers. This has a built-in one gigahertz processor Linux computer that talks to the autopilot, which is a Pixhawk 2 autopilot, and then that same gigahertz processor Linux computer is in the controller. That means this is an aerial motion control rig. There's no other aerial motion control. What that means is, if I want to set up a specific shot, we have a mode called cable cam. You literally I was click watching here, that. you go into cable cam, and what happens is you literally take off, you just find your starting frame. I can set my points on here. You don't have to set your points, you don't have to do anything. Really? I just use the live feed, I fly to my location, I rotate, I tilt, I go, yep, that's the framing I like. I hit A for cable cam. Now I go up, over, out, rotate, tilt find exactly what I want for my ending frame. Right. Even moving it a little this way, a little that way to change your parallax, you go boom, that's what I want for my ending frame. And it's tracking and my movement. No, it's so not. I'm gonna press one more button. Okay. It doesn't matter how you got there. Now it just creates Straight a cable line. between these two points, which means it's a known safe flight path. You can manually fly okay. back and forth on the cable. It will not go past the end point. So it's basically a slider in the sky. You've just set up a slider. Beautiful. Now, you can go back and forth yourself and just do manual camera control. On the camera. Tilt, pan freely, it's only gonna stay on that slider. Or, you do a motion control slider by leaving view lock turned on. Now, when I hit play, all five axes rotate, tilt, right. copter X, Y, and Z, all the way through space, all together. Logarithmically enters the move, it logarithmically comes out of the move, you can't even see the move stop. Right. So beautiful. So you literally, and if you want that to last 12 minutes, because you're going to do a cable, or you're going to do a time lapse across that yeah, 12 minutes. Really. Nice. I mean, it just opens up limitless possibilities. Uh, that's that's the cable cam. But that's cable. How about optical? orbit? How about orbit? Orbit. Tell so us. I yeah. want to get a really beautiful wrapping shot around a lighthouse. Or two people talking. Or two people talking. I fly up to that that point. I target it. I hit orbit, and then I hit play and it just starts perfectly orbiting around that subject. When I hit play, I can have it set to automatically start rolling on the GoPro. Right. When I hit stop, it automatically stops rolling on the GoPro. And with the orbit, I, you can, I can now adjust. There's not a, a, there's not a That's real right. physical limit. I mean, there's, That's right. you can you bang into You can do it yourself. Something. You can increase your radius by pulling back. Nice. You can decrease the radius. If I do altitude up and down while it's orbiting, 
the camera automatically tilts to keep whatever you had in target. You guys have really thought out this, oh, it's, it's but I wanted to hear about shots. the optical flow. So part of the solo story is the ability to update it and expand it over time. And we want the system to just get better and better and better. So the first part of that is being built on computers and being able to just in-app mobile update updates the whole computer. We've got 60 to 90 day schedule of new software updates coming out, which are new flight modes, you know, all kinds of new cool stuff. That's software. Now, what about hardware? We've built in an accessory bay right here on the bottom. These four screws and right. this big master plug here, Beautiful. that gives the open source community, us, third party companies, access to the computer, Mavlink, command and control, control of the camera, control of the gimbal. So whatever accessory they can dream up works with Solo. And here's what's fun is that if their accessory causes the computer to crash, it doesn't affect the autopilot. So it will still, still maintains position. If the computer doesn't reboot, autopilot flies home and lands. Wow. So they're co totally separated from each other. Colin, what I didn't ask you about was learning curve because I've never flown one of these. Absolutely. That's the great thing about Solo and its computers is that we have a bunch of features built in to make it easy to learn with. So anyone, you or anyone else, we can walk outside. I will hand you this controller. You will auto take off. You'll figure out, I'll show you what the controls are, which by the way, when this ships, we've got a built-in simulator right on the app so you can practice flying oh, while wow. your battery's charging. So I'm out of the box, flow. I don't have no to problem. do this and that <laughs> and calibrate. Nope. nope. It's just straight out of the box. That's I right. can press right. that button, which I'm not gonna do, the power button. Yeah, yeah, well you can, and you can tap this button to check your battery voltage anytime, uh -huh. hold it, turns it on. You know, another cool thing about the battery, you just push it, one clicks button right out, Beautiful. which means the battery, if we need to, can get taller over time if oh. people want an extended battery. That's it's all about future expandability. It seems like you guys have really put together a solid product. Thank you. Really yeah. exciting. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for watching.